Welcome to a Lunch with Biggie, a podcast about small business and creatives sharing their stories and inspiring you. My guest today has taken his love of photography, coffee, and community and has created a shared creative space serving up the most unique caffeinated creations. Please welcome the owner of Create Coffee, Quay Hugh. What's going on, Quay? How you guys doing? How you doing? Thanks for having me. You're very um, welcome, man. Thank you so much for having a lunch break with me. So my usual qu- first question is always, what's your go-to uh, lunch or sandwich? Um, probably Stasio's Italian. That's, oh, that's a good one. Yeah, it's it's really big. It's a nice size. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I used to be more of a uh, smoked turkey and ro- roast beef guy, but my wife got me into eating Italians and... Uh, that one is for sure one of my favorites. I love that. That's a great one. So, and what? And since obviously we're in Create Coffee, what's your? Uh, what would be your go-to coffee that either a you recommend or or that you drink yourself? Um, there's two I would recommend uh, that are probably pretty traditional and been with us since almost day one. Is uh, first one is the Purple Pearl, which is a taro based latte. It's uh, inspired uh, from boba tea, so you, the taro is like the most is the favorite or the most popular. So we took that and added some espresso, espresso shots in there, and then uh, the Tiger Latte, which is uh, a brown sugar latte. So the the sides of it kind of looks like uh, tiger stripes. Like a tiger stripe. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome, man. That's very cool. So since we're do you what do you usually drink do you I, like i mean obviously you, we'll, and we'll go we'll get into that how you kind of got yeah. into really into coffee but it's like what's your like go-to like what do you usually drink out of curiosity so um here i i try a lot of the creations here uh, of course you know we got to taste test them so i do that here but if i'm going to other shops uh, i stay pretty basic i i want to try more of a honey oak um honey oat latte type okay so that's probably like my go-to uh, if anything um but if I go there enough, I like to try their entire menu to see how everything tastes. If, yeah. it's, if it's up to par, their flavors and stuff like that. Um, but more importantly, I, I like to read uh, some of the descriptions to make sure that they taste like what they're describing. Yeah, uh, I think that's pretty important to me too. So no, I totally, uh, I totally get into that. So let's let's bite a little into my intro. Um, one of the things you, you're a full time uh, travel commercial photographer. Yep. How did you get into that? Ah. Uh, Man, actually, uh, it's all by accident. It's all by accident. Like you know, uh, I bought this camera. I want to say uh, I'm, I'm aging myself here. So uh, back in 2008, my uh, my first daughter was born in 2007, and uh, you know, very ignorant on my end. I walked into a studio. I got some prices, and I was blown away. I was like, "Oh shit! It's nine hundred dollars for these maternity maternity pictures," and you know, me, you know, being just the confident uh, person that I am, I was like, I think I'll just go and buy a camera and shoot it myself. And then it, it's it's not not like, not like a crazy story or anything, but that's yeah. that's like the gist of it. So I went and bought a camera. I started taking pictures of my kids, and then I got really good at it. Um, so, but I would say not until about 20, 2010, 2011 is when I really took it to that next level. And uh, with my job at that time, I was able to travel to San Francisco. I was able to tra- travel other places. I went to go visit family in Hong Kong, and and I used to bring the camera where camera with me everywhere. But it, it started getting to that next level. So now I'm starting to uh, buy a different camera body. Then I started jumping from crop sensor to full frame, then different lenses, and, and I started to really take a deep dive into it. Um, and then not until uh, Instagram came along is when when I, I really just took it to that next level right because there was no platform to, for me to post my work besides yeah. I think MySpace um, Tumblr yeah I was gonna say Tumblr was <laughs> yeah. what I was thinking of yeah you know, other blogging sites yeah yep that makes sense and you and originally from what I've read you actually went during your full-time job like this you actually use it as a stress reliever Yep. So it's kind of amazing that you kind of had like you used it, you know, obviously as a stress reliever when you're on travel for work on your other job and it just kind of led you to to this. Uh, and that's kind of a that's kind of an amazing thing to kind of see because everyone always wants to be a photo- like everyone wants to take pictures or they think yeah. they're t- good at taking yeah. pictures. You know what I mean? Um, so it's great that you kind of been able to kind of you've done that evolution from uh, from, you know, from doing it as a hobby stress relief to having a passion for it and kind of evolving from there at the same time. So you also have a love for coffee yep. and uh, and I know that you you know and I even saw that you're like a you know you're a specialty coffee associate certified barista yep. so 
tell me a little bit how like, how did that come about? Because you went from your your your, your, your like I guess your full time job photography. How did the, where did the coffee all of a sudden okay. the coffee part came in and you're like oh I'm gonna be a certified barista. All right. Um, so here I, I'll just jump back yeah. uh, about maybe 10, 15 years ago. Um, I always wanted to be in corporate America, and uh, I, I wanted to be in the upper echelon, more of an executive level. I got there, and then it was just shit is stressful. Like you, 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 you want to get to that top, but when you finally get there, you're like, oh my god, like I'm signing ten million dollar contracts, and this is like this whole marketing team is relying on me. It just it's it's, it's extremely stressful. Yeah. So during lunches and stuff, I used to go out to all parts of Orlando, um, Castleberry, Altamont, Sanford. I used to literally drive around for an hour and just find different places to shoot. Even after work, I was like chasing that beautiful sunset, trying to capture the essence of Orlando. Yeah. Um, and then uh, one day, uh, because of those travels, uh, in addition to some of the travels that I was doing with Sony at that time, um, I started to hang out at coffee shops. Um, I was doing a lot of editing there and I just started talking to the baristas more and I started to kind of really understand uh, coffee, specialty coffee, specialty beans, you know, the different grades. I didn't, I didn't know that that there's uh, coffee beans are actually graded mm -hmm. on the quality of beans, Robusta versus Arabica, like the, the, everything. And I kind of took a deep dive into started drinking lots of pour overs, Chemex pour overs. And I just, I really loved the, the coffee culture and I was editing it there all the time and I was talking to baristas and then uh, a friend of mine was, uh, at that time, it, it was kind of up and down with my, my current position and, and I, I, I wanted to leave. Um, so I started planning for it. Um, and then when I felt the time was right, I left. Um, and then I traveled for about five years as a, as a travel uh, and commercial photographer. And during that time period, I did, you know, it was when I was going through the discover stage of what I really loved, which is the photography and uh, the coffee portion. So that's where the love came from. It's just, you know, th those two ho essentially hobbies of mine become, yeah. become you your know, passion my and your passions. Loves. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then that's how, which is a perfect transition, by the way, uh, the kind of, that's kind of how Create Coffee came yep. about, um, which is one of the, the great things that I loved about hearing and just kind of reading, like, what it is and what you do that it's like a creative space but at the same time like you know you have you know which is very awesome the fact that you have like an area where you can actually rent out and take photos uh like a photo area um you know which is phenomenal to be able to do not to mention a great place for other people to be able to have creative coffee and at the same time be able to kind of different creatives you have bloggers you have different photographers video folks all kind of working together and just kind of creating that community Yep. Um, so originally, the original plan was to have a pretty large space with two full studios and actual real shared shared workspaces where people can come in here on a monthly basis and, and rent a room or have space to work from, um, similar to a WeWork, yeah. and, and then headlined by a true specialty coffee shop. Um, so that was the original idea, but you know, my, I had two investors that backed out. They didn't really, I don't know if they believed in my vision or just didn't see it through, but so this became a smaller version of it. We still have the studio. Um, if you notice, we have three large tables um, conducive to a work environment through community, then we have smaller tables. And then everything here, uh, people don't notice, but there's small little touches. Uh, for First thing is our Wi-Fi is super fast. So I have a fiber connection and it's open to everybody, it's free. So it's 400 megabytes per second. So I pay the, the higher price tier for creatives to be able to upload and download files. Um, if you look on the walls and on the floors, there's power outlets within within five, five to six feet. They're yeah. everywhere. So yeah. they're all over the walls. There's USBs for yep. people's phones. Love. It's on the floor. Um, and then all the local artwork. Um, some of his mine, some of our other uh, photographers as well. So we post and share that. And then uh, when the NFTs were really, really popular, yep. these three TVs actually served as a NFT digital gallery. Okay. So people were able to walk up, scan the QR code, and take and take it to the artist uh, OpenSea or something like that for whatever NFTs that they were selling. So uh, you know, it's heavily, heavily local focused, and then we used to do a ton of uh, workshops, I free saw, workshops. I saw that. I saw that. Um, we used to bring uh, pretty big YouTube uh, celebrity photographers in, and then uh, that was uh, pre-pandemic, and then we did a couple after the pandemic as well. So, 
Yeah, I, I, I saw I saw that. I mean, and that's kind of one of the things that I, I absolutely love of what you're trying to create is that whole promoting that creativity, that networking, a place like you said, you know, it's kind of like to connect, create, caffeinate, you know, it's kind of that whole thing. It's, um, which is what I love because obviously a lot of people come to coffee shops to work, uh, but why not have it a little bit more niche where you can kind of, you know, maybe interact with other people. Um, And then the other thing that I love that I think that I enjoy, and I think that's something that you got from, you know, probably your experiences just from going to different coffee shops is creating that community, having that local group that always, con- that you know, the constant customer that always comes in and creating that relationship with them as yeah. well. You know, I, uh, um, one really important point I, I always tell um, my teammates here and is, is you know, we, we love coffee, but everybody may not be into coffee as we are, but the community is what, what makes us, and that's what is extremely important. Yeah. If you look at our reviews, everybody just talks about how great our service is and why they love coming here. And, you know, we know it's kind of like Cheers. I say just, I mean, they're, they're a little bit too young for Cheers, yeah. but <laughs> I say, you know, just just think of, of, I want you guys to go watch Cheers. It's everybody knows yeah. your name yeah. when they come in, you know, refer by their name. We know everybody's drinks. And and that's one of the things that we, we try to do. If, if people, you know, think that we have shitty coffee, coffee subjective, first of all, um, but customer service isn't. Yeah. Right. So and that's one of the important things I try to talk to them about is like, hey, you know, they may not come back for the coffee, but they'll come back because of your service and, and how you treat somebody. And that's extremely important to me. You know, and I think that's even more important, especially because of the there's so many coffee places. And that, and that, and that was one of the things that I'm always kind of intrigued by is like, how do you you know, how do you differentiate Which yeah. you're kind of answering is like, you know, how do you differentiate something like that? Because. Yeah when you're competing with so many different coffee shops around the area, you know, especially local coffee shops in this area, cause we're in the mills 50 area. Um, you're going to, you know, you have a lot of competition. Yeah. So, um, yeah. how did you come about with the space? Yep. Um, and then kind of, how do you, what are some of the challenges that you have that you try to like, yep. you know, kind of, uh, you know, and obviously service is one of them to kind of overcompensate for people to be able to say, Hey, this is where I want to go. This is my coffee shop. But what are some things that some things that you kind of do to kind of help, you know, get more people to come to this location. So I think what we're known for and what we started out and what we really wanted to do was we wanted to take a mocktail Mm -hmm. and turn it, but do it for coffee, right? To do it on a craft coffee level and really bring out some of those flavors. And that's what we, we started out with. Um, We have a a batch brew machine, coffee machine, and we we don't even use it because uh, we were our, so focused on the specialty and the craft that drinks so um, people and we built a, such a good following that people love our seasonal drinks it's like okay what what's next what's next what yeah. are you coming out with what are you coming out with and it, it it takes you know an entire team to kind of put those flavors together it's a lot of testing it's a lot of flavor testing and we and we go through it every day everybody has their input and stuff like that so that's essentially what we try to be different in that as in that sense is to bring really good crafted coffee drinks um and then the other thing is we have a small twist of an asian influence so you have the terra latte you have the tiger latte we have a cream cheese garlic bread we have a tamago um, egg salads Mm -hmm. um so we we put a small twist to it yeah i love that i love that how how have you balanced because um obviously you're your Instagram's around Q, around yep. Q, um, and we'll obviously share all that. But um, how do you balance? And obviously, I know it has to do with a great team. But how do you balance the com- like? Because you still do com- the commercial yep. side of it. I see. I, I when I look at your Instagram, you're you're like you know a Sony ambassador, and you're like constantly going to amazing places to take uh, like ridiculous pictures. Um, I mean, I literally drool. I was like showing my wife on the Instagram. I was like, this is where this is, where, and she's like, this is amazing. I was like, yeah, yeah, and like. So how do you balance that? Balance the business, the family, the the photography because like because I mean there's a certain level of different level of stress. I mean obviously the I I am assuming it's not as extreme as when you were an executive, but right. there is a certain level because it's, now you're kind of spreading yourself in different directions. Yeah. How do you handle that and what do you do? It it's it's a different level. It's a different kind of stress, right? Yeah. You know, um it it's really hard, but I I've been I, I just multitask pretty pretty well i um i have a schedule um I, i'm pretty stri- strict on that schedule i plan everything out i'm kind of a planner i i 
I'm a planner, so you got to make sure that you have your T's crossed and your I's dotted. So with the photography business, we all share have a shared calendar. Uh, even my kids are on that calendar and make sure we know where we're at. Um, um, both kids play travel soccer as well, so wow. we got to make sure that that's on par. Um, you know, the wife is, you know, thank God I have her. She helps a lot at home. That allows, that frees me up to um, take on shoots. Um, you know, and I've been shooting for a long time, and I, I would say I, I went pro on a commercial level probably like 2015 is is when I uh, started doing a lot more commercial work. 2017 is when I left the, the corporate uh, life and became full-time. And then I met a lot of people. And I'm, I'm very fortunate to this day that I, I can pick the clients that I want to shoot. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't always like that. I mean, the grind, the grind was hard. I mean, I sh- when I first started, I shot, you know, freaking weddings to engagements to headshots to real estate. I, I mean, I was taking anything I can get, yep. you know, and then you kind of find a niche. So um, the work-life balance is, is really hard. You know, obviously you said it earlier, building a team that, that you can trust that you don't have to be here monitoring, looking over the shoulder, making sure that they do everything. And that starts off with hiring the right people, hiring people that get along, right? That's most important. I think uh, I learned a lot from my corporate world. Managing personalities Mm -hmm. is so extremely hard. And just finding teammates and team members that can get along and have the same energy and, and they're very positive, um, and that helps a lot. And, and these these guys are phenomenal. Like every single one of the the staff members, I, I, I tell them all the time. Like they're they're really good to me. Yeah. No, I think that's super important. It's super important to be able to tell them, to kind of be able to have them see it and experience it. I also think it's super important to be able to find people, especially when you're leaving the shop, that kind of can have the same message and the same understanding of what your mission is and what you're trying to do, yep. um, and have them be able to kind of share that mission as well. Because, um, yeah, it's definitely a tough one for me. It's I, I'm a one man deli shop, so I basically like when I do events, it's just mo- it's just me. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, that's always the hard part is like letting go of that having some someone else to be able to do it and kind of do it the same to the same level or at least the same way of being able to express and share some of that stuff so i totally understand that for sure um can we talk a little bit about some of your favorite things about running create coffee um i would say the people so i i come in here almost every day um to do some editing to do some work uh to create for for my own business as well but i i think i I like the people man i I really do i'm i'm such a big people person uh you know i want to know how um last week went i want to know how how your kids first ballet went you know like i want to i'm so involved in the community itself um so i i mean i like i just like being here right yeah you you got to build a business that you like to actually be at you're you're here quite a bit, so yeah, that yeah. makes total sense. What about what are some difficult teach or difficult challenges that people may not be aware of that uh, that you kind of deal with? Um, well, I think you mentioned it earlier, growth, right? It's uh, before when I, f- I I pick this location and I know it's off on on the, on a side street. It's mm-hmm. not on a main main drag, but I picked this location because you know rent was very affordable, um, but. There was only one coffee shop, and it was Lineage. Yep. When we first opened, now within I want to say like a one mile radius, we're talking fifteen to twenty shops, and you know that was over four years ago is when is when we opened. So I would say uh, staying competitive uh, with the current market, uh, understanding and understanding the current market. Yeah. Uh, I think we're starting to to hit a little bit of a uh, the recession that everybody's been talking about. It's starting to kind of uh, we're starting to see a little bit of that now. Um, so I would say the competition um, and then being off on a side show, we, we barely get any walk-up traffic. Uh, I think that's going to resolve itself soon. Uh, once these uh, five units in front of us open, I, yes. think, I think we should be able to drag in some walk-up mm-hmm. traffic. The only downside to that is parking's going to be crazy here. Yeah, it, it, it's already pretty bad. It's a tough one. It, I yeah. I won't lie. That's a that was one of the hard parts for me. I mean, obviously, I don't 
I'm not, I don't live in this area. So when I do drive in to come, the times I have come, it's like, I basically, it's like, I'm coming specifically to come drink coffee here and I'm going to try to find parking somewhere. Yeah. Uh, and so that's kind of how, so I could, that, that's one of the reasons why I was kind of curious. Cause like, I know that's always the tough part yeah. on it because it is also like, a, it is a busy road. You know, it, it is a, like the nice part of it is it is a busy intersect, a busy road. Uh, Cause people are trying to either get through cause they can't, they don't want to make that turn. So they kind of turn in here and they kind of go around and you get to go and, so I totally can see that as a, as something that's like a difficulty. Um, but at the same time, you have, you know, you have a sandwich sign outside kind of show, yeah. be able to tell people um, you're, you guys are great on social media um, are, are ton, really fun. Um, and you have a lot of people that love, and I, and I, it's one of my favorite things is they love uh, posting and showing that they're having coffee here, yeah. um, which I think is very important as well. Cause you know, nothing better than word of mouth. Um, I think that's like the greatest thing you can possibly get um, when it comes to a small business. Yep. Thank you. Um, we for our social media, we just try to have fun with it. You know, like yeah. the like these are our like real personalities. We yeah. don't try to like fake anything. It's just it's just us. We're, we just like to have fun. Um, I think that's the best way to create a fun environment for them. Um, but also, we're we're real. Like what you see on on our social is kind of how we are. We, yeah. we just talk shit and just have fun. You know. Um, there's and I for these guys, I don't want to build a stressful environment. We have team bonding events like uh, every other month. So we've done axe throwing, we've done top golf, we've done, we go to uh, cross street tour, tour, we have, we all take yeah. the whole team over there, have drinks, and we, tr- we do that every other month. That's um, great. Building a team, keeping those guys happy is important. No, I totally yeah. agree with that. Since we're in a creative space, I'm always intrigued by, because, and obviously you as a creative person as well, what do you do to, when you're, when you're in a creative rut? Like what, yeah. like... And obviously you're a planner, so I'm assuming there's certain times where you're kind of either brainstorming and thinking of things as well like that. But like when you're in a creative rut, what do you, how do you get out of it? Man, it's, it's really hard, right? Because you're, um, it's really hard because you have so much work and then you can't be creative. So one of the biggest things I do is um, you got to have a passion project to keep your creativity and keep yourself going. It can't be all about work all the time. If it's about work, 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 then it doesn't. Then it's not fun anymore, right? No. So, the the whole thing is 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 um, when I first started, and I became popular from photography is because I was loving what I was doing, and, and and it showed. But once you start to pick up some of the commercial work, it's just not as fun anymore, right? Because you now you have deliverables, you have mm-hmm. you have deadlines, you have times that you have to meet. So you have to try to keep a passion project in your back pocket to say, hey, you know what, I'm going to do this for fun. I'm going to do this, you know, I want to work on this. Or doing some pro, pro bono projects where you're not getting paid, but hey, this is a fun event. This is, this is fun for you. It's, it, yeah. it's a different lifestyle. It's not something that you're used to shooting. Yeah. So I try to take uh, some of those on as well. Like, for example, right now... Um, to try to keep myself from being ejected in my my daughter's soccer games, <laughs> I just focus on taking pictures and creating fun videos for them for for, for the team. For the team, and I don't even charge them uh, or anything. I just yeah. I just give the pictures to them. If you want to use the pictures, you're more than welcome to. I would use your pictures. I've seen the picture your pictures that you post on Facebook. It's uh, of your daughter. They're, they're pretty yeah. amazing. So, thank you. Um, but stuff like that, it, it keeps it's it's fun, right? Because you know I. Uh, I want my kids to, to be motivated and, and you know I, I love my kids to death and I want to make sure that they're seeing it they're seeing it in the bright light and um, the videos are fun their teammates love them as well so that stuff like small little stuff like that yeah. it, it, it motivates me a little bit more no I like that I think it's, a, it's super important it's one of those things that I've learned um, in the last few years the importance of having that um, having something that you a recreational thing something that you can actually do and enjoy um it could be mindless it could be like hey i I like watching whatever your guilty pleasure tv or it could be like hey i want to do a different hobby and doing some other activity not having to do anything having to do with what you're currently doing um and those things always kind of help be able to kind of do that um you know so i think that's like super important that's why i'm always i'm always intrigued by how people handle their creativity and like how they harness it and at the same time how do they get out of it because it does happen where you have an ebb and flow where you you just kind of like I'm just not feeling it and you're just trying to figure out how to get back into it so go, so I started to do some things uh, recently um, only because I used to love doing this when I was younger going out playing basketball uh, riding a bike I rode a bike for like 12 13 miles last night just because you know it, it, it gets you out of your element it yeah. brings you back 
Um, and you know, there's certain things that you have to do to keep you motivated. And, and you know, think of stuff that you used to love to do. Um, whether it's watching sports or anything like that, I, I, I started to kind of force myself, hey, let's, uh, I went to the Florida State game and, and, yeah. and we went to school there and I was like, hey, let's just go to this game. You yeah. know, like just forget about the money, let's just go and have fun, like yep. bring back some nostalgic memories, stuff like that. Um, that helps, it helps when they win. Yes, it helps. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but the, you know, it's, it's a different, it, you, you're getting your, you're putting yourself in a different element. You're not thinking about, oh, okay, what do I have to do to, to make this money to, to yeah. earn a living to you know pay for the kids whatever it is that they need yeah. and stuff like that no I totally get that I hate that's for me the hardest part of for me because I'm a big college uh, football fan yeah so for me the hardest part is the summer part um, that's actually where I notice where it should be where I'm obviously doing my the grind for getting ready for the fall because that's obviously when I sell but it's also the time when it's so hot and you don't want to leave the house and then there's in, as in as much activities and then it becomes harder and then that's the mm-hmm. part where I, I notice like I see those things so like for me recreational is, yeah. recreation is very important to be able to find that balance so I totally agree with you um, when it comes to that um, what advice would you give someone for want you know to kind of like because you're you mentioned a lot about networking um, especially when you're coming into a coffee shop and stuff like that like do you have any recommendations or, or ideas or things that you do when you've gone to net you know when you go to a coffee shop and to kind of network because sometimes you kind of feel like I don't want to bother someone they're working on something yeah. um, do you have do you usually do anything like is there anything like that to kind of kind of start the conversation going it, it depends, right? Because you, you're absolutely right. You don't want to kind of creep somebody out by like, yeah. oh my God, uh, you know, <laughs> I need my personal space. Yeah. Um, so I, it's just have a natural, just, you, you can kind of feel it, right? Yeah. Just walk by, oh, hey, you know, nice shirt or whatever. Kind of start, always start off the compliment, right? Yeah, and, yeah, then, yeah. and then that kind of leads into different conversations or whatever. Um, so, I mean, that's how I usually kind of start. Um, so one thing that I did when I was young, uh, first, uh, starting out in the photography business is I went to a lot of free networking events and that's where I met a lot of my connections and that's where I met a lot of my people um, and that's some advice I would give to creators starting yeah. out or even marketing coordinators like they're all over Facebook you literally said these are marketing events you just go and attend them bring a business card talk to people that's how I used to get uh, a lot of my work is I used to go and just make these connections. Hey, you know, my name is Koi. I'm a f- commercial photographer. This is what I do. This is some of my work. And, and just really network and really meet some of those people. Um, and I think that's some of the things that these these younger kids don't really uh, know how to know what to do is, you know, they, yeah. they get into a freelance world, but they don't understand how important networking is. You, you're, it doesn't matter. I have tons and tons of friends that have like a million followers and their work is phenomenal but they don't know how to talk to people and they don't know how to network and they can't get the business. Yeah. Um, so that's how important it is. No, I um, totally agree with that. The, the, the being able to meet in real life and actually have those connections and those conversations. Um, I think it's just, it's super important to be able to do those things. Yeah. And um, attend certain uh, shows and trade shows too, because that's where you, get, if, if people that want to be a commercial or a travel photographer, go and attend some of those conferences. You, I, I love conferences. I've learned a lot from them, um, a lot of those workshops and stuff like that. And you always got to be pretty humble to say, hey, you know what, I'm not, I'm not, you know, going to put my, I, I want to learn. I, yeah. I need to humble myself and, and, you know, I'm not the smartest person in the world, but I can take on more education. So. Yeah, you can always learn, always learn something, uh, something new, uh, and figure out new ways. What advice? Because obviously you have, and, and I'm kind of curious because you can kind of give me both two angles of the freelance side as well as also the business, like a, owning yep. a business. But what advice would you give someone for wanting to start something? Okay, uh, so I I talk about this all the time. I believe in the five P's: proper planning, pre- perf- uh, proper planning prevents poor performance. And I, like I mentioned earlier, I plan a lot. So for example, before I was gonna quit my job, um, I made sure, I think they said it's roughly six to eight months of income for you to be able to survive. And we're talking car payments, like as if you were living your normal life. Yeah. Roughly six to eight months of that income in your savings before you even quit. Um, So prepare properly. and have a plan. A lot of people rush into it because they just like, hey, I quit. 
you know i'm getting out of here but what what's your plan and then they're like oh shit yeah <laughs> they when reality smacks them in the face yeah. rents do and stuff like that they're like oh my god what am i gonna do yeah what have and, i done right and then they they're they can't get enough photography work they can't get enough gigs or worst case scenario from business perspective um as a coffee shop owner it's like oh my god where am i gonna get customers i just opened but you don't have any marketing plan you don't have anything how, how are people gonna know you know um so I, I would just say be properly prepared and have a plan of action um i had a performer before i opened this i knew exactly where my dollars were going um i know exactly where i was spending my marketing dollars i knew exactly how to uh, market the place. I talked to tons and tons of business owners to say, hey, look, how'd you get your name out there? Did you use somebody for PR? Did you use social? Do you run ads? Um, you know, what are some of your, your favorite products? You know, um, having tons of events. Um, I personally, I, I love social media influencers because um, I am one, but for the local area, yeah. I know all the social media influencers, whether they're foodie or lifestyle or photographers, and I network with them. And, and, and I, I, I try to get them to come out, whether I have to pay them or, or give them coffee. I mean, for, for whatever it is, yeah. you have to build that network. Um, and those people, you know, because I'm, you know, I am a Sony ambassador and I do have some of those connections that I can help them out sometimes, whether it's technical, whether it's from the Sony branded side, you know, whatever it is. So yeah. I try to use my connections and help other people as well. Um, I felt like I was never given anything. I had to earn everything myself, but I don't want other people to go through that. I, yeah. I want to be able to help them some way. No, man, I totally get that. And I love, I love that, that, uh, that concept and the idea. And I definitely think that a lot of people tend to, um, one of the things that really caught my attention was the fact that you talk to other small business owners and other coffee shops and just figure out and pick their brain. Cause a lot of times, yes, you're going to, you're going to come across people who don't want to share, yep. um, don't want to share anything cause it's, you know, they look at it that way. But I also know people that, you know, as long as you're kind of showing, Hey, this is what I'm doing. What are you doing differently? Or what can you do? then there's a collaboration and a lot of people are more yes. willing to kind of share. Uh, it's kind of like, I don't want to give you my secret sauce, but if yep. you're kind of, but if I at least know that you're kind of doing stuff, then I'm willing to kind of provide you um, some of that info and then kind of have that ebb and flow kind of thing. The, the key word is collaboration, yeah. right? Like we network, we talk to each other, we help each other. Yeah. There's enough room where we can all grow. Amen. It's not going to be me just divulging my entire business plan and telling you everything. Exactly. And you're not helping me for whatever yeah so it has to be a partnership or exactly. else it doesn't work out no man i totally i totally agree with that i totally think that's um the right way to go and and that's the only way to do it and yeah. especially when you're a small business and you're competing against you know because and especially in your world you're competing against you're still competing against the starbucks yeah uh yeah. you know it's like you know you have some people that that's all they do that's all they drink and then you have others that are kind of like well, they, they kind of look like i'm like you know like they like they, their craft beer they want their craft coffee uh and you kind of want to be able to do that and you want to yeah. be able to support those so i totally get that it, and, and social media has really made um, businesses, they, they've helped a lot, right? Because yeah. before it was just kind of like word of mouth, but now it's word of mouth and social media, you know, and, and the social media aspect helps a lot. And, and, and I feel bad for a lot of these uh, business owners that don't, don't utilize know. it. And, yeah. and, and it's like, it's like, well, how, how are you going to get your name out there? Um, and it's sad sometimes people, people believe in their product so, so well. And and they could they could have the best product there is, but if people don't know about it, yeah. they're not going to succeed. What's one advice out of curiosity for people that either an introvert? Let's we'll go with an introvert or, or just in general, like a person that does have a great product. Like, what's something that you feel like if someone were to be like, "Hey, Quay, I don't know, I just don't know what like." how do I make it better? Like, what can I do to make it better? Is there one thing that you kind of know, like a tried and true that's like, hey, this is one, like, base foundation of this is what worked for us on social? I think, so one is the product, right? So you have to have a, a not only does it have to taste good, it yeah. has to look good and it has to be presentable. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, I, I know a lot of, a lot of, uh, people are against it or, or they hate it or whatever but you have to have a kind of instagram friendly product 
Um, and and that's that's the truth. There's no sugarcoat in it because it's you're after the general public. Yeah. Um, so we try to have you know pretty stuff. We try to have something that's appealing, something's more relatable, something's funny. However, we also want to stick to what what we know and what you know is a representation of us, right? That's on brand. So witty, funny, creative, um, pretty, good tasting high customer service, something bold. Yeah. That's, you know, part of, of why I also chose the lion as as kind of our, our mascot, right? It's, it's prideful, it's bold. Um, it's not afraid to take risk and chances. Yeah. Um, and that's on brand for everything that, that we do here. And you can you can look on our social media like, hey, look, that's a great brand. I want to associate myself with that yeah. or, or not. And, and a lot of people, they're, they're afraid to put themselves out there on social for what other people may judge of them. Exactly. There, there may be, you know, 10 people that hate you, but freaking 300 or 400 that love you. So who cares about those 10 other people? Yeah. You know, and yeah. No, I totally agree. It's funny that you said that because um, I just read a thing about um, negative comments versus positive comments. And they're saying that it takes two and a half positive comments to defer to one negative comment. Which is crazy to think, right? Because that's kind of how our brain sometimes is wired, uh, which you would think you would appreciate more the 300 versus the 10 that yeah. are bad. But usually the 10 are the ones like you, almost, like those are the ones you harp on, even though like there should be no reason to you. Yeah. But sometimes that's where people focus on. And that's the hard part of changing that mindset of I need to like the, the positives. Yeah. Like I got, look at what you do have. Don't look at what you don't have yeah. uh, type of thing. So no, I totally agree with that. There's this coffee shop in uh, in California. They're called Coffee Dose, and they had um, they used to have these lunch signs that uh, that resonated with me heavy. And it said, uh, "We survived your shitty Yelp review, and we'll survive this too." Love it. Or we'll serve the yeah. we'll survive the pandemic too, or something yeah. like that. Uh, something along those lines. And and I was like, man, because I used to get. Like super obsessed with uh, reviews, and yep. like, oh, I'm like, hey, we gotta change this, we gotta change this, and then you start to think to yourself, like, damn, I'm changing an entire menu for one person, one person. and yeah. w- in their opinion, and I was like, okay, now I'm, I'm, I'm gonna step back a little bit. Let's yeah. let's just see how many of how, like take into consideration, but let's see if it affects everybody because yeah. I, I'm not gonna do that again, right? I'm, I'm not gonna change one thing for that one person just to make that one person exactly. happy where you have a, a customer base of 500 that may love it, you know? So it's, it's really it's really hard to, to balance that out. No, man, for sure, for sure. Well, I know it's a lunch break, so I got one more before, I, I got one more just general question before we, I, I have you uh, tell folks where to find you and how to, how to follow you and come and get, drink coffee. Um, you do a lot of traveling. Mm-hmm. Where has there been a location that you've been to that has surprised you, like like that you like did not expect it to be as amazing as it was, and then when you were there to capture photos, you were like, wow, like did not expect it at all. Um, I would say probably uh, Italy. Okay. Um, I, so I knew it was going to be an amazing place, but what caught me off guard is the food. I've had tons of Italian stuff here. Yeah. But Italian food over there, oh different. my God, it is different. <laughs> it is yeah. so different. And uh, I knew going in that they were going to have a lot of beautiful coastal places. Uh, but to, I think the food there is what surprised me the most. Not necessarily the landscapes. Okay. Because uh, I knew that going in, but uh, I would say the food for sure. Okay. What about in the U.S.? Any place in the U.S. that's kind of, you're like, wow, it's always my favorite to go be able to capture pictures and just see see the, be- the beauty of nature? Uh, I want to say New York City. It's I, I can go New York City every month and not be sick of it. Cause yeah. it's, there's, it's different every time. It's different, yeah. It's, it, it's, you know, it's so big and, and, and there's so many people there. Um, you can go out to the nightlife. You can go out to the tourist spot, tourist uh, spots. You can go out to out there just to photograph. You can go out there just for the food. Um, and I specifically make R&D trips up there and, and try out different uh, places and different restaurants yeah. just so I can see how, how they do it, how the food is. Um, it, it's a learning curve for me, right? I, I, I will literally go sit into a business, a successful business, and see how they run and how they do stuff because yeah. I want to learn. But okay, this is you know, this is their workflow, um, yeah. and this is what I need to kind of adapt. Yeah. Um, I mean, for places that are running that taking 100 transactions in a 30 minute time span, it's like holy shit, how are you doing? How are you this, doing? Right? Yeah. So it, it, it's always it was a, a learning experience. 
No, I love that. I love that. Where can people uh, follow you? Where can they uh, where can they follow Create Coffee and enjoy some of your caffeinated creations? So you can follow us at at Create Coffee, um, spelled with a Q for my for my, for my name. So it's Q R E A T E Coffee, and we are located on Mills and Fifty, right behind the CVS and right behind uh, all that construction in the same plaza as Ming's Bistro. And then for my photography and commercial work, you can find me at at Around and then the letter Q on Instagram. That's awesome, Q. Thank you so much for uh, for being on. I really appreciate it. I've been meaning, I've been wanting to chat with you for a while because we've never actually met, but I've been following you for a while. I've had your coffee, so it's like it's kind of was one of those where I was like, I kind of needed the. Ex- this is my excuse to be able to get yeah. to meet you. So I definitely appreciate it. Um, that's our show for today. Thank you so much to Quayhu for being on and having lunch with me um definitely make sure to check them out online definitely make sure if you're in the east orlando if you're in the mills 50 area definitely come by and have a coffee um definitely will be instagrammable uh and if you're a photographer and you need a place to take photos you also have a foodio photo studio here that you can actually take photos um you could either do it by the hour you could also rent it by if you need it for the day um there's some flexibility just reach out to q and he'll be able to to kind of work with you um if you enjoyed the show definitely make sure to subscribe if you want to check and support me check out my brand deli fresh thread to do some shopping tell your friends thank you until next time keep eating sandwiches and follow your passion thanks everyone